Hey folks, in this episode I caught up with Shreya Arya. Shreya is one of our data school consultants here at the Information Lab and produced this visualisation all about Google Analytics trends and data. This visualisation got Visit of the Day, has received 400 favourites on Tableau Public and has now made the long list of the Information is Beautiful awards. It's really interesting how this dashboard came about, so I caught up with Shreya. And this is what happened next. I saw you were doing one of these back to these basic challenges. Um, so in this, they gave you this data set, or gave you quite a few data sets. Uh, they gave you a few questions to answer, and then they gave you some brand colors as well uh, to work with. So quite a lot of like, not just the data set, but requirements sort of thrown at you as well. Uh, what were your sort of first steps in getting started with this viz? This was actually my first time trying out a business style dashboard. I wasn't very familiar with the general layouts of these business style dashboards or even the Google Analytics data itself. So, um, you know, I was fresh out of like uni, just finished chemistry degree. <laughs> um, so it was, it was still all very new to me. Um, so my first steps definitely included um, heading to Tableau Public, kind of seeing what else is out there, like the general layouts of these ty types of dashboards even just understanding like Google Analytics data terminology. For example, like what's the difference between um, page views, unique page views, sessions, campaigns. Yeah, just really familiarizing myself with the data. And I feel like once I kind of got that a bit more under wraps, I was then able to think about how I wanted to visualize this data. Yeah, but... there's, a, there's a whole voice <laughs> piece there, isn't it? Of like just I suppose equating yourself with the data set some people just dive straight into tableau and start making charts but yeah um if you can't even understand like the the what you're seeing on screen like what does a page for me then yeah that's totally great idea to go out find hey what someone else has done before and sort of say oh okay this now makes sense in the grander scheme of things like through this you were building up sort of an idea i suppose of what you wanted to look like did that did that kind of view stay stays fixed or did that kind of evolve over time you started building out this dashboard? I would say it definitely evolved over time. Yeah, I had like a rough idea of how I wanted the KPIs to look, but the rest of that, I just let grow organically or develop organically um, over time. Yeah, so usually when I'm like creating these data visualizations, I'll have a notebook next to me. So every time I'm like, planning stuff out or like creating if I have like a cool idea that comes to mind and I'm like oh that would look really really cool like I should try that out I'll just like scribble it down or like draw it out so that way I don't forget it and I can always be like okay so that's where I kind of wanted to go with this hmm. but yeah in general it's a very organic process for me there's such like a fluid moment when it comes to like pen and paper isn't there like, I know a lot of people like to sketch things out before they go uh, I, for me, like, I, I have a lot of project ideas, so I just write them on a post-it note and stick them on a wall. Uh, and sometimes it's like, I come back to them and think, oh yeah, I actually have the skills to do this one now, so I'm going to give this one a go. And and then sometimes, like, I get halfway with a project and I'm just, I'm just going to put it back on the wall and save it for next time, so it's not like a failed thing, it's just one for next time. But yeah, the one thing that sort of hit me straight away was these, these brand colours, so back to this basics gave you these colors to go and use uh i would have thought oh yeah let's go and make that like the colors of my marks or the lines or like elements here and there but you put them in the kpis here um how did you decide on using the colors that way yeah so i think i kind of knew i wanted the kpis to stand out a lot um from the very beginning and initially i remember it was a lot of like experimenting with how I wanted to like incorporate these brand colors into the dashboard. But I remember um, initially my plan was to have each of the KPIs like a single uniform color. Um, tried it out, wasn't fully satisfied with how it was looking. Um, and then I had an idea of like having a gradient, but a vertical gradient for one of the KPIs transitioning from purple to blue. And it looked great, and I, I really thought it looked cool. And then I kind of duplicated it for the rest of the KPIs, and it looked very cookie cutter. So I liked yeah. it, but it, it wasn't there yet. And then finally I had the idea, when I had all the KPIs lined up, I was like, you know what would be really cool if it transitioned from like purple to blue across the KPIs? So I tried that out, and I really, really liked it. 
and that actually inspired the rest of my design because okay. I don't know if it's the same with you but if you like one part of your design it can really I don't know it's just it's very inspiring well you've got to kind of make it all fit together as like one cohesive piece it's sort of I suppose if you're building something from parts of other things you can't just take like I don't know the front of one car and put it on like the back of another or something like that mm. you know but yeah these colors work really nice because they're very strong colors like quite high high impacting on the eyes but here it looks very quite easy on the eyes but very attractive at the same time uh, so I think this works so, so well uh, so nicely together but yeah so you were talking about how this kind of inspired the rest of this I always thought this all mm drove to me like sort of like a web page like you were going on like your own google analytics like home page uh, to go and see your work um did you draw inspiration from that from the like, community tableau public again she was saying um yeah definitely just seeing what was out there I feel like ui design in general i love like seeing what the latest trends are in ui design i feel like gradients are very popular at the moment they just look very clean so that definitely inspired the design when i was um in high school, I think about year eight or year nine, I had this like really cool Sony Xperia phone and it was an Android. Um, really cool. It had like this little LED bar at the bottom which would change colors, like it light up and change colors. And the, basically the widgets on that phone um, looked very similar to the KPIs I've made here. Like that very clean, um, elegant design. And um, I don't know if it's an Android thing or just a Sony thing. But that really inspired me as well. Um, I want to talk a bit more on chart choices. So we've been focusing a lot on the top pin. Uh, but we have some more charts down here, some more data to show. Um, the one thing I saw was this map. So uh, this map and this bar chart, which I think works sort of great together, but they both sort of, set, sort of show the same data. Um, can you talk to me about why you went for both rather than one or the other? Yeah. Um, so the reason I kind of went for both is because I thought it'd be a bit more, I thought it'd be easier to like gain those insights very quickly by having both side by side. For example, if you look at the map, you can see there are lots of um, points or marks. So each of the marks are like circular marks. They're sized by the number of, um, the total number of views per country. And you can see they're overlapping quite a lot. Um, some of these yes. circles are yes. similar size. Yeah. yeah the but section of Europe here is hard to unpick, isn't it? <laughs> but um, I feel like, especially when you have circles of similar size, it can be hard to visually look at it and be like, okay, is this one bigger? Is this one bigger? Like, they look about the same. You'd have to hover over and see if you didn't have that bar chart. And I feel someone who's just viewing the dashboard, if, if they wanted to use it to, to pick up on those insights, it's a lot clearer to have, um, you know, the top 10 most viewed locations um, and even just having that bar for comparison I feel like it's very quick to get those insights but at the same time having a map um, is really helpful for example my geography isn't the best um, I kind of know where like places are but I, I get confused quite a lot so it's really helpful to actually like hover over a place on the bar chart and see that highlighted on the map yeah. so I feel like that's really helpful if you want to use it in that aspect as well it's always like this sort of instant click when you see a map i know i'm dealing with like locations countries something along those lines so yeah it's great to sort of dive into that but yeah the other issue of like these overlapping points you know great but also like i got yeah one by one so this really helps sort of highlight which ones are the biggest here which i think is yeah perfectly good. yeah and you can also like using the map you can also compare like a certain country to its surrounding locations mm. so you can visually see like how it's performing compared to other countries so it's nice to have that visual again absolutely absolutely um yeah so i think the dashboard is great but there was there anything else that you wanted to add into this maybe this was like something you saw uh, maybe this was some data you wish you had to put in there was there anything that you'd want to put in here that wasn't so available so there wasn't anything in terms of availability that um, I, I wanted to add. I feel like since this was my first like business style dashboard project, I was quite intimidated going into it. Um, and I, I definitely followed the prompts in, in the Back to Visualization Basics um, challenge. 
Um, but I would have loved to explore more of like the sessions or campaigns, you know, amounts spent on page, some of that data a bit more, because currently it's very, um, it's very much page views, hmm. which at the time felt more comfortable to me. But now, now that I've like experienced more like Google an Analytics data, um, I definitely feel a lot more confident using some of those other fields. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, part of these projects is like the learning path as well. So I, the amount of projects I've done where I've had to dive into a new topic and then at the end of it, I thought, oh, I know so much more that I could then add to the next one and the next one. So um, yeah, don't worry. These, this data set will come back again and again. Google Analytics is super popular. So um, yeah, but now you've got something to start with and a lot of great ideas on what to go on, go on to next, which is like best place to be. Lastly, uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, is there anything you're working on at the moment that we should keep an eye out for? I'm currently creating like a real world fake data dashboard about um, solar energy in Ohio in the US. My goal for this dashboard is to make it really, really interactive. So I'm really excited um, to share that hopefully soon. But it's looking good. Yeah, so keep an eye out. Okay, awesome. Like more business dashboards to come. So I like how you sort of uh, started like with this project and now it's inspired you to do more and more business dashboards, which is great. So um, yeah. I think even just learning through training, you know, I've picked up so many new skills and it's more about like, I want to apply that in a new like dashboard sense. So I think that's why it's a bit more exciting. <laughs> I really enjoyed catching up with Shreya and here are some of my takeaways. So in this visualization, Shreya was stepping out of the comfort zone, building that first business dashboard. So what Shreya did was actually go out and have a look about what everybody else is doing in terms of building out business dashboards. Loads of inspiration out there on Tableau Public, but also getting acquainted with some of those metrics of understanding what do sessions mean, what do clicks mean, are they important to a business or is there something else I should be looking at? Really can help focus your work and produce a very valuable piece of work for your end user. We often talk about how I like to best represent data and this says use this chart not that chart but actually what Shreya's done here is actually put two charts together and they both complement each other despite showing the same data they both help the user see and understand that data get a feel for what's going on with the data. This visualization was all about gaining experience, gaining exposure to business dashboards. And that's what you should be doing with your portfolios, gaining experiences in different areas, trying to understand how you go and cater for these different audiences, stepping away from what you know as your comfort zone. Everybody likes to have a nice polished, like perfectly formed portfolio. But the reality is if you keep going out of your comfort zone, trying out new things, seeing what works, what learning a bit more about these, you are going to grow so quickly in terms of data visualization, your skills that you can bring to any new project in the future, which is all what your portfolio is all about. I gave you a little sneak peek there, that solar energy dashboard, go and check out all those links in this description and check out what Shreya is up to next. Loads of great stuff coming and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.